Hello, my name is Justin Tate, and I'm speaking on behalf of our group named The Achievers. This is our principle of management pitch, and before we dive into this, I just want to take the time to thank my viewers for listening. Our group has an interesting idea we would like to share with you that incorporate important ideals and concepts that are important for everyday life. With that said, let's get into this. So let's start off the presentation by showing you our chosen principles of management topic. Our group picked this one in particular because it's something a lot of people can relate to and it's definitely something everyone can work on. It relates to a lot of business owners as well as people who potentially want to be business owners down to uh, everyday life scenarios. And that topic is decision making. Now the technical term for this is it's something that can be regarded as the cognitive process resulting in the selection of a belief or a course of action among several alternative possibilities. But I feel like to truly understand something, you need to be able to explain it in layman's terms. Human beings are rational people, so decision making is based off what we perceive is the best decision. We choose things that we believe is better off for us. It only makes sense, right? As human beings, we want the best we can possibly get. Um, decision making can be broken down into several steps. Now, there is no exact process, but we're going to do our best to demonstrate these steps, how you can make these good decisions throughout our TV pitch. Before we get into the pitch for our TV show idea, I want to introduce a possible scenario that requires, at least in our opinions, good decision making skills. Some things to keep in mind before I reveal this scenario are some points on decision making you should definitely take into consideration. And one of these points is that there are no guarantees to anything, and you certainly can never know in advance whether a decision will be correct. Therefore, you have to be prepared to take some risks. That's just how it goes. You also need to be more proactive and look for opportunities. If you make a mistake, view it as an opportunity to learn what you didn't what didn't work and why. Many times, you know, the decisions you make can be reversible and you can definitely change your mind on something before it's too late. Also another big point you should take into consideration is that you shouldn't let fear stop you. After all, there is no courage without fear. Sometimes people become so paralyzed with the fear of making a wrong decision that they panic and they'll lose sight of what they're trying to accomplish. And this ultimately hinders, you know, making any decision. If you're fearing if 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 you're fearing something, it's easy to second guess yourself. And that's also another point I want to make is you shouldn't second guess yourself. Because in the end, second guessing yourself also undermines what you're trying to accomplish. Once you've made the decision, let the chips fall where they may. At the very least, you have learned important lessons. All right, so the scenario I want to show is you have a huge incomplete project due Monday and your cousin just asked you to go camping all weekend. Now, what would you do? We'll reveal what we thought at the very end of the presentation. And without further ado, this is our show idea. The name is called The Hungry Burger. And I want to introduce to you the characters. We have Jack Robinson, a bit of an older guy, but he's the owner of the Hungry Burger. He's someone that everyone can love, definitely someone that can relate to, but he's a bit senile, as in he's kind of forgetful and he's he, he gets taken advantage of pretty easily. But he also used to be a good owner, he's just growing old. He tries to see the good in everyone and is definitely a good leader. Then we have Clark Mallory. He's the supervisor and veteran employee of two years at the Hungry Burger. Now he's more of a conniving character. He's the problem maker and he's definitely the person who is taking advantage of Jack Robinson. He will do whatever it takes to get ahead even if that means cheating. He's definitely what we would consider the evil character of the Hungry Burger. Next we have Lewis Daniels. He's sort of our ray of light within this whole storyline. He's the new employee in town. Um, he just got hired at the Hungry Burger and he is definitely the the sight of good we'd like to include. And he's trying he's looking out for Jack Robinson's interests. 
as the plot progresses, Jack Robinson becomes more aware of how Clark really is and how good of a person Lewis is. But you see that change as we go through the episodes. Ultimately, how we want our show to progress is in the direction where Jack Robinson, since he's been the manager of the Hungry Burger for years, we're trying to get him retired. He's a good person, like we said. Um, so the whole plot of the show is Lewis and Clark basically competing for that best position to take over the Hungry Burger. And that's where we see decision making kind of go hand in hand. Um, the decisions that each one makes is going to ultimately influence where they end up. As we see the story progress, we see Clark, he tries, obviously he takes advantage of Jack Robinson, he just wants it for his own personal gain. So his decisions are going to be more of a selfish based, more selfish based claims, just for stuff that can profit him. He doesn't really care a whole lot about what happens to Jack, and he wants to be the manager, but he has to still prove to Jack that he deserves it. He does every crime you can think of within a company and he's trying to be sneaky about it but Lewis is catch he catches on and he reports to Jack and this is where you can see throughout the story we have Lewis becoming the ray of light that he is he he's gonna come in and show Jack what kind of person Clark really is and Lewis's decision making he shows him he shows Jack that maybe he's right for ownership of the hungry burger because Jack as the story goes on we see that Jack trusts Lewis's over Clark more and more. Ultimately, the big decision Jack has to make is who is the Hungry Burger going to end up in the hands of, which is a pretty important decision. And we're going to focus this whole, this whole idea towards generally the younger generation out of college. It's going to be structured similarly to The Office in that we get the thoughts of each of our characters as the story progresses. And um, I think it's something people right out of college could definitely relate to. Better decision making, better life in our opinions. Okay, so we're going to start off the whole story by introducing the characters, and it's going to start off with Clark trying to take over Jack's hungry burger. He tries to trick Jack to agree to give him a large portion of the restaurant. He's going to try and get his shares. Episode 1 is basically going to open it up and show what kind of character Jack is, what kind of character Clark is. In Episode 2, we're introduced to Lewis. Jack definitely sees what Clark is trying to do, but he doesn't really think it's as bad as it really is. He definitely tries to see the good in everyone, and since Clark's been around for so long, he's trying to give him the benefit of the doubt. But Lewis knows better. Like we said, he's the ray of hope, basically for Jack and the Hungry Burger's well-being. So Lewis starts to make several key decisions on how he should handle this situation. He begins to confront Jack about this so he can regain control of his beloved Hungry Burger. Episode 3 really expands on the problem that's already been presented. We see that Jack tells Clark that if he wants to have a greater share of the Hungry Burger, he needs to display quality management skills. Clark just hasn't been cutting it in Jack's eyes, especially with Lewis helping Jack see that. Clark's infuriated that Jack isn't just handing him over the Hungry Burger. And he still, Lewis still worries that Clark may try to gain control of the restaurant, even though to Jack's face he's acting grateful. Episode 4, we really start to see the problem grow even bigger. Clark's committing unspeakable crimes to his customers, he's feeding them expired food, and he's taking money from Jack. And Lewis is definitely catching on what Clark is up to, and even though he tells Jack, Jack stays pretty oblivious to this. Clark finds out that Lewis has been basically ratting on him, so he threatens Lewis. And really the problem is at an all-time high as the story develops. Episode 5, we really see Lewis make an important decision on how to handle Clark. 
and he decides to confront him, even though Clark threatened Lewis. He shows Jack just what kind of good he is to the Hungry Burger, and Jack really is starting to consider him to be the potential owner. So the decision-making of Jack has somewhat shifted over based on Lewis's decisions he made. Ultimately, the story has room to grow, and it definitely has a good plot that a lot of people could relate to. They've all been in situations where someone was doing something that they know they shouldn't be. And with that said, let's take a look back at the scenario we gave you earlier in the presentation. Now, the scenario was... You have a huge, incomplete project due Monday, and your cousin just asks you to go camping all weekend. Now, based on what we've learned from our principles of management, we came up with the outcome that seemed to be best, given the opportunity cost of all the other decisions, is that no one can have their cake and eat it too. So to strategically handle this, we decided that the project is due on a certain date but camping can be done any time. So we thought the best outcome would be to handle the obligations of the project, do that, and then tell your cousin you're going to go camping next weekend or try and rearrange it. It's a peaceful outcome, and it's definitely a good way to go about making a decision. We hope to show our viewers of the show how much of an impact that decision making can have on their lives and even the lives of others. Decision making is not solely based on your own interests. It can be the interests of others. With that said, we'd like to thank you for taking the time to listen to us, and we hope you'll consider helping make our TV show a reality. Thank you so much.